Shannon. And I'm Kim. And you are listening to From Ring to Bell, a wedding planning podcast. Where we share tips and information to help you plan the wedding of your dreams. Without all the stress. Wedding Words Glossary Part 7. Legal Terms. Episode number 120. Hi everybody, it's Kim. (laughs) (laughs) Kim sounds like this. I have a a voice today. I have a different (laughs) voice today. Put on a different voice today. Um, Sorry, but I hope you enjoy it. (laughs) So I wanted to remind you guys that we are going to be at the uh, Rustic Bride Northwest Expo on May 7th. At Dairyland in Snohomish, Washington. Come out and see us. Hit us up. We're going we're gonna to have our recording equipment up there, and we want to talk to you guys. See how it's going, mm-hmm. what questions you have, all that. We want to talk to you. Yep. And there's going to be plenty of inspiration and vendors for you to talk to. Live music and fire pit beer tasting <laughs> awesome stuff they say that's for the guys but, but hey you know another little thing thank you for the five star reviews whoever are who are ratings uh. whomever is doing that it doesn't tell us <laughs> thank you thank you thank you you're keeping our ratings high and we really we really appreciate that yeah we're not competitive in any way no 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 we're not being competitive we're just <laughs> saying thank you we're we're displaying some gratitude hmm. <laughs> So this is probably the last episode of the Wedding Words Glossary. Yes. Because we can't think of anything else to add to it. Right. And this one took a long time to get through. Yes. (laughs) It's stuff we don't, we know about, but don't really know. Yeah, we're not, we're not experts in that. Right. And so we asked some of our professional friends. Mm -hmm. We scoured the internet, law libraries, things like that. Legal terms. Yeah. If you care nothing about this, we're very sorry. Um, We just thought that it would be best for everybody to know what's up. Right. Your contracts have lots of legal terms on them and you need to understand it, especially for photography people. Yes. When you you sign a photography contract, there are lots of legalese in there that you need to understand. Yes. They're scary, confusing, (laughs) even to us sometimes. Yeah. (laughs) Even on our... Our contracts as as yeah. uh, floral designers, it's like, okay, let's call up our friends. <laughs> what does this mean again? <laughs> and we had to change some terms because they're like, uh, you say this, they'll want one thing. They want one thing. And yes. if you say this, then you don't need to give this back to them. Exactly. So we had to change some things too. Let's get started. Okay. Independent contractor. That's what your vendors are most likely always going to be. They right. don't work for you. They are independent contractors. So it's a person or business which performs services for another person or entity under a contract between them with the terms spelled out, such as duties, pay, and the amount and type of work and other matters. An independent contractor is distinguished from an employee who works for a regular employer. Right. I think that's the key. Right. They're not your longtime employee. Right. They're a quick. You are hiring them for this certain amount of yes. time. Mm-hmm. They are independent from you. They are not your employee. And you are, in turn, their client. So you are a person or group, depending on who's doing the hiring, that uses this professional advice or service of a lawyer, accountant, I guess you would say, a photographer, floral designer, all your vendors. Mm-hmm. You are their client. Right. A retainer. The next three kind of coincide and they they kind of mean the same thing but a little different in each one Mm -hmm. so a retainer is a fee paid in advance to someone in order to secure or keep their services when required so you repay you pay a retainer when you hire a vendor to hold your date i don't know if that's right i think it's just saying i'm hiring you whether whatever date that is i think that's where the booking fee comes in oh see okay so a booking fee holds your date yeah, I believe that's what it is. I, I believe that's the difference. And of course, I think some of the vendors kind of use them as the same Interchangeable, thing. Interchangeable, yeah. Okay, a deposit. Because we used to use deposit in price of a retainer, and somebody said, you need to use a retainer and not a deposit. Because right. a deposit, they say deposit, and they think, oh, I can get this money back. Yes. That's where you got to make clear with your vendor. If you're paying a deposit, 
Are you getting that back? Right. Or is it going towards your end balance? Mm-hmm. So a deposit is a sum payable as a first installment on a purchase of something or as a pledge for a contract. So it can be or. It's an and or situation. Mm-hmm. But I think commonly people think they're getting their deposit right. back. And usually if it's a deposit, it comes off of your last bill. Right. Or it comes off of your invoice price. That's the way I always heard it. Usually when it says a deposit, it will say non-refundable deposit. Yes. Sometimes a deposit and retainer are used interchangeably. Please read the fine print. Yes. Or ask specifically. Right. Just to keep it clear. I mean, because really, <laughs> I, I would feel bad if if I took somebody's quote unquote deposit and they were expecting it back, mm. but I never explained that it's not coming back to you. That would feel really bad. And, right. and, and vice versa. If mm. I was expecting my deposit back... And it didn't come back to me. Yeah. It would be kind of confusing. So absolutely. Make make sure it's clear. Disclaimer. It's basically a statement, document, assertion that disclaims responsibility, affiliation, etc. So I guess it's just, just to explain exactly who and what. Right. Term. Conditions with regard to payment, price, charges, rates, wages, etc. Or an appointed or set time date. As for payment, rent, wages, etc. Mm-hmm. So when they say the terms of the contract, it'll have all of these little subtitles in your contract. You need to read all of those mm-hmm. because they're the fine print. Exactly. And it has to do with what your payment, right. which is really important. Because in there is all those little explanations of everything that's in the f- bigger print on your contract. Right. When it says C subsection 5 dash B 4 2 whatever, you need to read those. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> because this is going to explain when your payments are due, mm-hmm. when your last payment is due. If it's, you know, it'll have which we'll, which we'll get through in there like breach of contract clauses, termination mm-hmm. clauses, everything like that. Which is the next one is a termination clause. Woohoo. <laughs> A section of a swap contract, which, what's that, uh, that describes what will happen if the contract is ended early or defaulted on. The termination clause can make the counterparty who is responsible for the default or termination event pay damages to the other party. Lots of big words. (laughs) A swap contract is this one that you give to the client, the client signs and comes back. Okay. There you go. That's easy. Yeah. This is important to know. Because what happens if the wedding falls through and you don't end up having it? Right. And, and, you know, what happens then? Or if the vendor falls through. Yeah. That's, I mean, it works for both ends. It Mm -hmm. works for, it protects you and it protects the vendor. If the vendor falls through, he usually, you know, they usually owe you the money back. Unless it specifically says in that contract, which, again, (laughs) read read the fine print. Mm -hmm. So, breach of contract, which is... Basically, if the vendor falls through, that's kind of what, you know, or let's say you hire somebody and you never hear from them. Right. That's a breach of contract. Mm -hmm. Breach of contract is a legal cause of action in which a binding agreement or bargain for exchange is not honored by one or more of the parties to the contract by non-performance or interference with the other party's performance. So this could be you. Mm -hmm. You could be in breach of contract or your vendor could be in breach of contract. I know sometimes, and this is where you have to read the fine print, Mm -hmm. you can be in breach of contract for hiring a second one of these vendors. Right. Let's say you hire two photographers. Right, right. You have to check and make sure it's okay with your very first photographer that you hired that it's okay to hire somebody else too. (laughs) Because some vendors do not want a duplicate vendor. Right. So you just, again, read the fine print because you could be in breach and not even know it. Mm-hmm. Resolution, an action of solving a problem, dispute, or contentious matter. I think that's pretty self-explanatory, yep. right? Yep. Acts of God. Okay. This is where <laughs> this is where you may think it's an act of God, but it may not be right. in the terms of the contract. So it's usually a natural disaster outside of human control. Period. Mm-hmm. Earthquake, tsunami, and then like, if you're in Texas or Kansas, tornadoes. tornadoes. <laughs> Here, earthquakes, yeah. yeah. Um, and and it's, it's something you, you're not held responsible for. Let's say your venue burns down or something right. like that. It, it, you have to 
That's that's really kind of an act of God, even though if it was man made, right? Or you know, like acts of war, right? If your venue gets destroyed by a terrorist attack, you know, we don't want yeah. to think about that. But I mean, here in this day and age, yes, we have to think about that. So that's an act of God, not necessarily God made, but an act right. of war. It all comes into this because I mean, it's something you couldn't avoid, right? Exactly. And sometimes it, if in your in your contract, it'll say this is null and void if something mm. happens, like the, if there's an act of God that happens. Right. A waiver, a document recording the waiving of a right or claim. There's a little section in there, like if you give concessions or a waiver, you sign a waiver to get extra stuff or mm-hmm. the rights to something. Mm-hmm. That's a waiver. Exactly. I would say you would kind of think of this as the rights to your photos or right. something like that. Uh, media clause. So when I when I think of a media clause, it's only only to say yes, you can use the video that you're taking of me mm-hmm. on your on your website. Right. You know, it's okay. I, I'm like I'm letting you use my my face and my right. my body or whatever. Most vendors will have this on there because they publish their photo the photos that. Your photographer vendor takes, Mm -hmm. they publish them on their social media, on their website, everything Mm -hmm. like that. Because it's, it is their work that the photographer takes pictures of. Yes. It doesn't mean that they own the photo. It just means that they have rights to publish them on their social media or a video or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and your videographer too. Yeah. And I can't think of any other media that that would pertain unless you're recording audio. Right. (laughs) But I don't think you're podcasting while you're there. Yeah. Surely you aren't. <laughs> Hopefully you're not. <laughs> yeah. There's an annual bridal expo coming up on May 7th, 2017. It's from 1 to 5 p.m. and it's free. The Rustic Bride Northwest Expo will be at Dairyland near downtown Snohomish. There will be a variety of local rustic wedding professionals, such as photographers, planners, florists, caterers, and other unique rustic-themed vendors. The expo will be full of ideas, inspiration, and expertise that will make your wedding come together beautifully. Come and hang out with us, because we're going to be there, too, on May 7th for all the rustic. Plus, for the men, there's a bonfire, beer tasting, and live music. Go to from ringtovale.com slash rbnw to RSVP. So a quote or estimate is to produce a statement of the approximate cost of whatever service that you're getting. Mm -hmm. So we give a floral estimate or quote. I use them interchangeably sometimes. Mm -hmm. Our our client management services, our client management software uses quote. I say estimate most of the time. And it's, I believe it's the same thing. You know, when you start out, you want an estimation of the amount that they're going to charge. Mm -hmm. And this is what that is. Does not mean it's the final price. It is an estimate or quote Mm -hmm. to the best of their ability because things change. Right. The next one is invoice. It's the document that shows a list of goods or services and the prices to be paid. It's your invoice, what you owe. Right. And this is usually, I wouldn't say the final be all because we change invoices a lot. But Mm -hmm. after the estimate, it goes toward the invoice. And this is what, you know, after you make changes to the estimate, this is the final invoice. Right. Or the invoice, not right. So the final invoice. <laughs> <sighs> there could be a couple invoices, yeah. especially if you, the client, change your mind on things and change up, you right. know, your, your ideas and stuff. Receipt. A written statement saying that the money or goods have been received. So if you pay your client or if you pay your vendor, they will should send you a receipt for that amount that you paid. So you can says, have a record of it. Yep. That says paid. Copyright. Okay. This is this. This is a sticky thing, copyright is. <laughs> what the definition is, is the, the exclusive legal right to reproduce, publish, sell, or distribute the matter and form of something as a literary, musical, or artistic work owned by the person who creates the work. The photos that your photographer took are not yours, basically. The client's. They are the copyright of the photographer. That's right. The photographer will always own those images. They give you edited work. That means you cannot change them. That's right. You can't change them. You can't really even print them unless you have 
permission from them. Which is what we'll get into next. Definitely can't sell them. Right. It's just, it's something you've purchased from them. It's, you know, if you think of it, if you go to a museum and you purchase a painting, you can't go photocopy that and sell that and and change it, paint on top of it and all that kind of stuff. It's the same thing for photos. Right. It's their work. You're you're just borrowing it. You can <laughs> well. You're purchasing. You're purchasing it, but yeah. you can't change. Even if they give you digital images that mm-hmm. you can pull up on your computer and put them through Photoshop of your own. Yes, that is against the law. Yeah, it is against the law because they are copyrighted. Of they are copyrighted material mm-hmm. from the photographer or videographer that you hire. It's the same thing with books. Right. You know, and plagiarism. Right. And, it, like, we can't sit here and read you a book. That's right. not, even in podcasts, right. that's illegal. We can't play... Copyrighted music. Music, or even parts of movies without getting permission. Right. That's all copyrighted stuff. Okay. Photo print release. A photo release form, also sometimes referred to as a photo consent form or a photo copyright form, is a contract between the photographer and client or model... That grants the client permission to print hard copies of the photos, portraits, headshots, wedding photographs, and it gives someone permission to reproduce my images for their own personal use. So what this is saying is they, if they give you, if you sign this photo release form, you have these photos that you can give to other people, Mm -hmm. put them on your social media, but then the copyright... Rules apply that you cannot sell them. sell them. You can't make money off of you them. You can't make money off them. You can give them to people. Sure. You can print them. Mm-hmm. But sometimes, well, I, I don't know now, sometimes some printers ask for a copy or a yeah. print release. Right. Do you have a print release for this, you know, mm-hmm. professional stuff? If you go to a retailer to print these, like Costco's Photo Lab or something like that, you will have to, you will should, mm-hmm. they should ask you for a print release for these That's photos. That's right. There's some things you can do. Mm -hmm. So that is post them on all your social media, print an unlimited amount of them, you know, photos, canvas, albums, (laughs) t-shirts, and you can share them with your family. That's what you can do with them. You cannot edit the images in any way. This includes cropping and, yes, Instagram filters. Does count. You can't claim the work as your own, and you can't use them as commercial gain, which means you can't sell them. I have... Read, uh, you know, being a photographer myself, not in, in business, I've read many, many, many times where um, a photographer has taken a certain picture, has shared it somewhere with mm. their with their watermark on it, and they'll see it in a magazine, right? Where a company has taken their photo without their permission <laughs> and used it as marketing material, therefore making money from it and not paying them anything, for right? It, and they which can- is wrong. They can snap them with legal fees oh, and, yes. you know, a legal document saying, if you don't take my photo, I'm going to sue you. Be careful with that. Don't sell your photo. <laughs> and, don't and, claim them as your own. And please don't put them on Instagram and cut off the watermark oh. and put your own filters on there and stuff. I know every in this day and age with, with our, our camera phones and mm-hmm. we can do all this fun stuff and we like this certain look. We, you have paid this photographer for the work that they do. They've already edited it. They've made you. It look is their beautiful. signature look on this yes. photo. Don't change it. That's so wrong. It's mm. so wrong. Yeah. Anyway, so a <laughs> limited my yeah. <laughs> a limited print or photo release outlines very specific ways that the photo can be printed or used. So if you get a limited release, you need to read all the fine print in it. Right. Neither release provides editing rights. That that's the main point. You leave the photos alone. It's not your work. And that's I want right. we want to thank Kate Gansneder for these awesome definitions for this because mm-hmm. I looked through and I'm not a photographer, so it was all like kind of gibberish to me. So she helped <laughs> me out a lot. So thank you, Kate. Yeah. Our resident photography guru. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I mean, it you this you're most likely not going to get into a big most photographers will just ask you to take it down. Right. And if you comply, 
they'll be okay. Right. But if you don't, then you can get in some big trouble. And if they see you messed with their photo. Yeah. I mean, come on. You hire them for that certain look anyway. Mm-hmm. So why would you want to change it? That's mm-hmm. my thing. So. Well, I know some people are like, well, they didn't smooth my skin out enough. I need to re-smooth it out more. That is not okay. Yeah. Uh-uh. You don't touch that photo in any way. That's right. Anyway, All right. let's let's we'll let's get just, off our yeah, we'll, we'll get off our legal soapbox right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, because my voice is so bad, let's just keep this short and sweet, <laughs> and say if you'd like to support us, check out our Patreon page at fromraintoval.com slash give. And you can also reach us at any time by emailing us at info at fromraintoval.com. Ask us questions, give us comments. Words of advice. Yes. <laughs> hey, Topics. If you if there's any legal terms we left out, please let us know. We'll we'll come back and, and post it on the post. Yeah. Uh, the show notes for this show will be at from ringtovale.com slash one twenty. You can always subscribe to the podcast. And that's the one thing we ask you to do above all is to subscribe to the podcast so that you know when we release a show. Right. And Sometime in the near future, you may get something back from us since you subscribed, but not right now. (laughs) We're still working on that. So (laughs) anyway, so until next time, no stress, no worries. Keep calm and listen on. Thank you for listening to our podcast. You can find us on Facebook, From Ring to Veil, on Twitter, at From Ring to Veil, and on our website, fromringtoveil.com. Music provided by bensound.com.